was pretty shocked by some of the things that went down. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren. If you're new here and I've had a few requests to make this video, thank you so much to my Twitter follower, Dale, for requesting this video. If you're not already following me on Twitter and Instagram, make sure you're following me. Go do that and also make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Join the lip fam. Anyways, you might have seen this in the news a little bit lately. I kind of wanted to break down some of the drama and talk about this feud that's going on between the Sex and the City actors because in my opinion it's kind of crazy. So, for any of you guys out there die-hard Sex and the City fans, I wasn't like a die-hard fan I'll admit, but I was a lover of the show and everything that it stood for. I mean, especially at the time that it was on television, it created this culture about women and empowerment and these four gorgeous powerhouse women navigating their way through life and love in the big city and, and while I didn't watch the show religiously like a lot of my friends did, I really did love the show. As a little girl, it's empowering to watch these women go for their dreams and be heartbroken but still be gorgeous and okay and moving on and able to find the next best thing for them in life. Because that's life. Sometimes you're gonna get your heart broken but it's gonna be okay. Okay, so let's break down this drama that's been going on. Because that show ended a long time ago but they have all been in the news recently. And by all, I mean Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall. I kind of heard about it through headlines, but I didn't hadn't clicked on anything yet. And then when I started to dig deeper to write this script, I was pretty shocked by some of the things that went down. As you already know, I'm sure, Carrie, Samantha, Miranda, and Charlotte are the four stars in this series that produced six seasons and two movies. And a huge cult following of fans all over the world. This was one of the biggest shows on television in the 90s and 2000s. I would even argue that it's as big of a deal as Friends was. And now, I am a diehard Friends fanatic. I own every single season, and I can quote that show like it's my job. I'd be a very rich woman if that was an actual job. But on that, one of my favorite things about being a Friends fan was learning that those six characters on the show, Monica, Rachel, Phoebe, Chandler, Joey, and Ross, they were actually friends in real life. The six of them all did exit interviews about how the cast really was a family. They all hang out on the weekends, they all do trips sometimes, and we all know that that chemistry on screen was just as real as it was off screen, which all warmed our hearts just a little bit. And honestly, I think it's that on screen and off screen chemistry that made that show so absolutely incredible. I mean, I still fall asleep to that show on Netflix today. I even curled my hair while watching episodes of Friends. I watched the episode with the cake. <laughs> Comment down below if you know which one that is. <laughs> Now, what has been upsetting to a lot of longtime Sex and the City fans is that recently we learned that the on-screen chemistry between the four best friends of the show was just that, on-screen chemistry and nothing more. Apparently, there was a third Sex and the City movie in the works. I don't know why, the second one really wasn't that good. Like, why do you have a Fendi purse in Morocco? Anyways, that's just my opinion. So there was a third movie in the works and production crews were all lined up. They started getting filming dates and scouting locations. And then it came out that they weren't going to do the movie and all of the papers claimed that it was because of Kim Cattrall who played Samantha Jones and her diva demands, how she wanted more money and just all these other rumors started flying about how they're not coming out with a third movie and it's all because of Kim Cattrall. Apparently a third Sex in the City movie was in the works, but in a very Samantha Jones way, Kim Cattrall decided that she did not want to take part in the movie. She wasn't gonna be a part of it. That was it. She said that she was 61. She was done playing the character of Samantha Jones. Now, I am not sure how true all these other rumors are, but I'm gonna tell you about them anyway because it's just, it's hard to know who's telling the truth here. No one will ever know, but here's what everyone's saying. In these reports of when the movie said that they were getting shut down, it was all because of Kim Cattrall and her decisions, it was reported that Kim said that she would do the third Sex and the City movie if and only if Warner Brothers Studios agreed to produce other movies that she had had in development. Otherwise, she was out. She wasn't gonna do it. Now, I, like I said, I'm not sure how true these rumors are, but multiple reports did say that this was the case. This made Kim Cattrall very, very upset. The last time that there were rumors that Kim Cattrall and Sarah Jessica Parker really weren't friends, you didn't hear anything from Kim. Apparently, there were some reports that it had come out that the girls didn't get along, and I wanna say that Sarah Jessica Parker said something, but Kim didn't say anything. Nothing came out of her publicist, nothing, no words or comments were spoken on any of that. But then, when this rumor came out that Kim was being a diva, demanding more money, demanding that her other projects be produced, Kim was not about to take any of that lying down, so she booked an on-camera interview with Pierce Morgan and her Gucci gloves came off. In this interview, here's what Kim said. I'll play the clip after, but I wanna just talk about it right now really quick. When speaking about Sarah Jessica Parker, Kim Cattrall said this. We've never been friends, we've only ever been colleagues. Have you never really got on? We've never been friends. 
We've been colleagues. And in some ways, it's a very healthy place to be because then you have a clear line mm -hmm. between your professional life and relationship and your personal. Specifically, Sarah Jessica Parker is that I think she could have been nicer. Mm -hmm. I really think she could have been nicer. I don't know what her issue is. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that, that still bothers me is this feeling that of, of being in some way made to be the baddie. I mm. mean, um, I never asked for any money. I never asked for any projects. I'm, you know, to be thought of as some kind of diva is absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> She basically just shattered this whole illusion of these four girls and this this glitter, this like sparkle dust that it had all over it and kind of crushed a lot of people's dreams of all of them being friends in real life by saying this statement. Now, after this happened, Sarah Jessica Parker went on live with Andy Cohen and she told him that she was heartbroken to hear what Kim had to say about her friendship and that she remembered things differently. What was your reaction to Kim Cattrall telling Piers Morgan that you were never friends, just colleagues? I uh, just heartbroken. I mean, the whole week, you and I spoke yeah. about it endlessly because I was just, I don't know, I was really, I don't know, I found it very upsetting because that's, you know, that's not the way I recall our experience. Now, fast forward to a few weeks ago to a very upsetting story that came out. On February 3rd, Kim Cattrall posted to her Instagram that her brother, Christopher Cattrall, had been missing. And she called out to her Instagram followers if they had known anything and to help search for him. Devastatingly, a day later, she announced that her brother had been found dead, which is just so horrible. And I'm so sorry for Kim and her family. However, it was on this Instagram post that Sarah Jessica Parker decided to send her condolences to Kim and her family. She commented this, Dearest Kim, my love and condolences to you and yours, and Godspeed to your beloved brother. Kim Cottrell then responded by posting a full Instagram post with a picture and a caption calling out Sarah Jessica Parker. In huge bold letters, she wrote, I don't need your love or support at this tragic time, at Sarah Jessica Parker. She captioned the Instagram with this message. My mom asked me today, when will that at Sarah Jessica Parker, that hypocrite, leave you alone? Your continuous reaching out is a painful reminder of how cruel you really were then and now. Let me make this very clear if I haven't already. You are not my family. You are not my friend. So I'm writing to tell you one last time to stop exploiting our tragedy in order to restore your nice girl persona. And then she copied a link to a New York Post article called Inside the Mean Girls Culture That Destroyed Sex in the City. Whoo, that was really intense. Now, if you've ever been through a devastating and sudden loss in your life, you will unfortunately do and say things that are rash and possibly out of character. Understandably so. Losing someone you love so suddenly is the worst possible feeling in the world. Trust me, I know, I've been there, unfortunately. A part of me in this moment understands that Kim felt the need to speak her truth, and she did. And she just wanted to say how she truly felt. Now, I keep going very back and forth on my thoughts here, but I think I've kind of come to a conclusion that I'd like to share with you guys and get your opinion on. Because again, people deal with grief very, very differently, and they have every right to feel whatever they're going to feel. Now, we all have no idea what really went on behind the scenes those six years. No one ever really will except the four of them. If there was indeed a fight or a lack of friendship between Sarah Jessica Parker and Kim Cattrall, they would have known that. They would know that tension between the two and just kind of, it's out there, it's known. There were clearly rumors and articles written about how diva Kim Cattrall wouldn't sign on for a third movie and how Sarah Jessica Parker was devastated to hear that and she was heartbroken about it. There's no denying these rumors, these news articles were posted by big, big publishers and it was kind of the talk of the town towards the end of last year. If I were Sarah Jessica Parker and I saw that someone who I had a rocky relationship with had just gone through or is going through a devastating tragedy, I don't think I would be commenting on their public Instagram with a comment that everyone can see. If she really did want to send condolences to Kim and her family appropriately, she could have messaged her privately, sent her flowers, sent a card, anything. But 
there's just something I don't feel right about the way Sarah Jessica Parker commented on a public post for the entire world to see, knowing that all of this drama had just recently gone down between the two of them. I don't really think that's the right way to extend the olive branch. I don't think it's the right time. It kind of rubs me in the wrong way. Again, this is all my own opinion. I would love to hear your thoughts on this because a part of me watching all of this go down and the fact that I was even, that all of us were even able to watch this go down really did feel like SJP was trying to protect her good girl, I'm friends with everybody persona. Now, please don't jump all over me. I absolutely love Sarah Jessica Parker. I always hear that any fan or other crew member who has worked with her has said that she is a delight, she's super nice to people, and I love to hear when an A-list celebrity is treating her fans and everyone around her in a good way. But I just feel like she handled this situation inappropriately. Knowing that there was already drama in the air and, and things have been written about them both, I just it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I honestly don't blame Kim for feeling like SJP was trying to take advantage of her tragedy. But on the other side of things, I don't necessarily agree with Kim's super public Instagram post calling her out, but hey, it's social media. You get to be the curator of your own content, of your own life. And if that's how she felt, and that's when she was like, I'm done with the rumors, I'm squashing the rumors, like this is what I'm gonna do, and like a big Instagram post, like sure, that's what you wanted to do. I don't know if I would have done it that way, but you know, I'm not her. That's just why I'm giving you my opinion on this. I also wanna say that I truly am sorry to Kim Cattrall and her family for the devastating loss of their brother and son. That is the worst feeling in the world. I just wanted to give you my opinion into this drama, see what you guys think. Do you think that Sarah Jessica Parker was wrong to send her condolences in such a public way, knowing that there was drama between the two? Or do you think that Kim Cattrall shouldn't have had such a public and harsh response? Again, death is a very touchy subject and some people don't always know how to act. Some people don't know how to deal with other people's grief and that obviously could have played a role in this whole drama. But it's hard to say, I just kind of wanted to wrap up this drama for you and explain it from both sides as always. Don't forget to comment down below and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. You should also subscribe to my vlog channel. I'm gonna be having videos up on there very, very soon. I'm excited to share more of my life with you guys and yeah, that's all I have for you and I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so as you already know, I'm sure Carrie Miranda Sam, Samantha. As you already know, I'm sure Carrie Miranda Samantha and if there was indeed, if there indeed, hmm.